Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News, the 4th of April. And we have news out of, surprise, surprise, Syria. Uh, Syrian army forces have continued to storm rebel areas, torching homes, uh, burning people alive. By the way, uh, the crisis in Syria began more than a year ago, and during that year, 9,000, an estimated 9,000 Syrians have died at the hands of Bashar al-Assad's troops. Uh, it's one of the worst uh, uh, violations of human rights that we have seen in recent years, and, and yet nothing seems to stop it. Uh, we have a dateline from uh, the Associated Press, uh, dateline Beirut, the Syrian government sent troops backed by tanks into rebellious areas starting last Monday, hunting down act activists, torching their homes, and bulldozing others, opposition groups said. At the United Nations, International Envoy Kofi Annan set an April 10th deadline for full compliance with a peace plan to end the violence in Syria. He also told the Security Council at a closed-door meeting, this last Monday, the Damascus has agreed to withdraw its troops from cities by that date, that is by April 10th. This story seems to be completely contradicted by something else that's taking place, which is very interesting. Russian warships have launched a uh, military drill in the eastern Mediterranean, countering another military drill that has already been taking place. Uh, uh, United States, Israeli, and Greek uh, warships have been uh, engaged in a joint military exercise in the eastern Mediterranean. Well, they're now joined by a Russian guided missile cruiser and its support fleet. Not 24 hours after Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warned that uh, a preemptive strike by the U.S. and or Israel would violate international law, Mo Moscow has put muscle into this warning. Tuesday, April 3rd, uh, the Russian guided missile destroyer Smetlevy arrived in the Syrian port of Tartus from its Black Sea base for a naval exercise. The warship support group is on its way. A lot of it is already there, uh, but the rest of it is coming. Uh, from Debka file uh, comes the report that the Russian flotilla carried a three-fold message aimed directly at Washington, number one, the Russian-Iranian strategy of propping up the Assad regime, which has brought the Syrian ruler close to victory over his foes, will continue. So I want you to get that first and foremost, and, and that is that in spite of the fact that Bashar al-Assad told Kofi Annan, I will uh, withdraw my troops by the 10th, the Russians have come. And they have buoyed him up in conjunction with the Iran or Iranians, saying, in effect, no, uh, the Syrian uh, assault over the citizens that has been taking place now over the past weeks will continue. Number two, Russia is providing the Assad regime with defense systems capable of repelling foreign military intervention, uh, i.e., the United States, Israel, Turkey, whoever it might be. Number three, consigning the Smetlevy warship to Syria illustrates Moscow's new rapid response policy. That's what they are uh, showcasing now in the Middle East. The Russians are uh, letting the world know that, hey, we can be there and we can be there quickly with high-tech cruisers uh, loaded with everything up to nuclear weapons. So what do we have in the Middle East? We have the Russians and the Iranians acting together in conjunction with Bashar al-Assad in Syria. We have a three-way uh, power structure there, which, by the way, conforms perfectly with Bible, the Bible prophecy of Ezekiel 38. We also have a United States, Israeli, Saudi Arabia triangle on the other side of the coin, which again is perfectly illustrated in Ezekiel 38 because we have long said that Ezekiel 38, 13, uh, which reads as follows, Sheba and Dedan with the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, art thou come to take a spoil? Hast gather away thy company to take a prey. Uh, we have here 
Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, that is the Western Alliance, asking a question of Russia and Iran and Syria. Have you come here to take a spoil? Have you come to take a prey? In other words, loot? To carry away silver and gold, cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? And this is amazing to me because on one side of the, of the battle, as illustrated by Ezekiel, you have the Russians, the Syrians, the Iranians. On the other side of the battle, you have the Western Alliance in conjunction with the Saudis, which is exactly what we see today. We have, in other words, this gathering storm that we have talked about for so long. And so Russian warships now have entered into the mix the Russians carrying a very strong message. No, Bashar Assad will not slacken the pace of his assault against his own citizens. And we, the Russians, will stand by along with the Iranians to support Bashar al-Assad no matter what he needs. This is an amazing situation. And I just wanted to point that out today. And I also wanted to point out how closely it matches uh, the alliances that are set up in Scripture. I could read other similar prophecies from Jeremiah, but uh, I think you get the idea. Uh, Russia is in the mix. We had thought for many years that Russia had sort of pulled back. Of course, after the collapse of the old Soviet Union, the Russians rather ret re retracted their uh, assaults into the Middle East, which we had seen for many years. But now they're back again in force, and saying, in effect, we're here to stay, and we're going to support our clients. Again, those clients would be Syria, Iran, and I think soon to come, Egypt will become a major client. But that's another story, and we'll be talking about that in days to come. Gary Stearman, it's an interesting time in which we live. And we'll be watching very carefully as this situation continues to develop. So along with us, keep looking up.